Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about the structure of DNA. And we're gonna also talk about the individuals who figured out the structure of DNA. And the two most famous people for um, DNA structure are James Watson and Francis Crick, which you see over here. Um, I believe this is oh, Watson and Crick right there, okay? So um, they determined the structure of DNA in 1953, but they did not do it themselves. So this is their model that they drew of what DNA looks like. DNA is a chain of nucleotides and it has three basic parts to it. It has a phosphate group, it has a pentose sugar, and it has a nitrogenous containing base. So the phosphate group, and I'm just gonna draw a little circle is attached to a pentose sugar, which pentose means five-sided, so something like that, and then a nitrogenous base. And so the base is going to be one of four different types. I'm just gonna draw a box because I can't draw that well. So this is the base, I'll just put a B. The bases are either adenine, guanine, G-U-A-N-I, there we go, um, cytosine, or thymine, T-H-Y-I-N-E, okay? So those are the four different bases that are going to be found there, okay? So... Watson and Crick get the majority of the credit for determining this, but they did not do it alone. There was a lot of scientists that were that were scrambling to figure out the structure of DNA. And this included Rosalind Franklin. So Rosalind Franklin right here, she worked in a different lab from, from Watson and Crick. And they worked in different buildings. I mean, they didn't work in the same area. They didn't work at the same college or anything. Um, Rosalind Franklin had been using a process known as x-ray diffraction. So x-ray diffraction um, allowed her to see the structure of DNA. And so that's how they figured out that these nucleotides were all on the inside of some bigger structure, right? So that helped to determine the shape of the DNA. Maurice Wilkins worked in the same lab with her. And he decided that science shouldn't be hidden and there shouldn't be, um, there should be open knowledge for everyone. So he took her picture this picture right here, oh, sorry, this picture right here, and he gave it to Watson and Crick. Watson and Crick had been talking with her, and she refused to help them. She didn't want to work with anybody else. She was going to do this work and figure out the structure of DNA on her own, and she was close. Well, Wilkins decided that, um, yeah, no, I think that, you know, we can all work together. Well, um, that picture helped Watson and Crick figure out the shape where the, where the phosphate, where the, um, the, um, pentose sugar and the, the nucleotides went. And then Erwin Shargoff, in 1953, had, was also working on um, trying to come up with the structure of DNA. And what he had figured out, so over here you don't see this because it got cut off, I'm sorry. Y-M-I-N-E. Let's see, Y-T-O-S-I-N-E. What he figured out was that anytime you had thymine, um, you had equal amounts of adenine. And anytime you had cytosine, you had equal amounts of guanine. So the amount of adenine and thymine equaling meant that they likely bond bonded together. 
So anytime you have an A on one DNA strand, you're going to have a bond with thymine on the other. So adenine and thymine bind together. They are complementary. Anytime you have a cytosine on one strand of DNA, you're going to have a guanine binding to it on the other because they are also complementary. What does complementary mean? They stick together. So I always typically draw them um, in a shape that allows for you to see that you know they are actually complementary to each other. So something like this. and something like this. And since these two have shapes that complement each other, these two have shapes that complement each other, they're always going to bind together. And so with all of this information, Watson and Crick figured out that structure of DNA, that it was this double helix wound up with the nucleotides in the middle the bases in the middle, the sugar and phosphate background on the outside. So they won a Nobel Prize. They, along with Maurice Wilkins, won a Nobel Prize. Rosalind Franklin over here did not win a, a Nobel Prize. And there's a reason for that. She died before they won the Nobel Prize. Um, she ended up dying of cancer. And so about five years after she died, they received the Nobel Prize. But since she was already dead, she couldn't receive it. But she still should get credit because without her information, that was kind of stolen by Maurice Wilkins and then used by Watson and Crick, um, they wouldn't have been able to figure out this process, this structure of DNA. So let's look at that structure and actually, you know what, I'm going to stop this video and we'll go into the next video and we'll look at the structure of DNA. All right, bye.